Welcome to the channel. I'm really excited about this video because I love router planes. So, I have six different router planes we're going to look at. I have two Stanleys, the Bench Dog, the Lee Nielsen, the Veritas, and yes, the Katz Moses. So, we're going to check them out, review their specs to help you make a decision if you're thinking about getting one. So, stick with me. I just have to take a second and say... I love you guys. I mean, really, the subscribers have just been awesome. The comments I'm getting, the positive feedback, constructive criticism, it's just been amazing. Um, I dove into YouTube head first. If you guys have been following the channel, you see background, lights, cameras, all new because I'm going all in. Um, again, I'm getting great feedback and I have a ton of videos lined up, so I'm just having a blast with it. And thank you guys for making this all possible. Um, I do have to shout out three specific people because without them, this video wouldn't have been possible. So Ben let me borrow the Lee Nielsen, Blaine let me borrow the Bench Dog, and Joe let me borrow the Cat's Moses. Joe is actually one of my members at that Buy Me A Coffee thing, so check that out in the link below. And again, thank you all, I love you, and get ready because I got more stuff coming out and we're just going to keep going full force with this channel. So the first place I want to start is going over the style differences and that might make a decision for you right here and now. Um, these are the two Stanleys that I have. This is an older one that does not have the depth adjust. This is a newer one that does have the depth adjust. Now, Lee Nielsen and Benchdog, when you look at both of their websites, they both flat out say these are loosely based off of the Stanley design. Now, what Lee Nielsen did is they took the Stanley design and made it better. Benchdog basically just copied the Lee Nielsen. So that's how these ones work out. That's the Stanley style is what I'm going to call them. Then we get into the Veritas style. I'm not going to talk about the argument between Veritas and Katz Moses. In my opinion, it is very clear that Katz Moses copied the Veritas style. But as you hear, it's going on over here. Again, not getting into it. But I'm going to lump these two together and say that they are the Veritas style because Veritas made their own style. I don't believe it's based off of anything except their own invention. So these are Veritas. These ones are Stanley. The first big difference you're going to see are the knobs. So when you look at the Stanley style, they're straight up and down knobs. When you look at the Veritas style, they're angled knobs, which in my opinion is a lot more ergonomic and comfortable and easier to use. The next thing that you're going to notice is the fences. So the Lee Nielsen or the Stanley style is a fence that you screw in from the top down to here. You loosen this knob and then you adjust your fence. Now, as you can see, there's not a lot of range here. The way that they got around that is making multiple holes in the top of the fence. So what you would do if you notice that you're not getting the right range that you need, you would undo the screw, put it into a different hole here, whichever one you needed. That's how their fence works. The Veritas style fence loops underneath. So it's held in by a screw here. You loosen this knob and then you can adjust it. So this fence, in my opinion, is just a lot easier to use. It has more range than the Stanley style does. Um, without having to like adjust the, the screw and stuff. The other thing with the fences, they both can go for a flat reference surface and a curved reference surface. So for the Lee, excuse me, for the Stanley, you would just take this, flip it the other way, and then boom, you can do a curved surface. Veritas style is the same way. So you have the flat one here, and then this bar can actually unscrew go into the other side and then you would use this side as the reference and then boom you have a curved surface. Now all of them do have depth stops except for the Katz Moses so let me show you the Stanley style first. So the Stanley style depth stop is you undo this screw and then it's this right here. Lee Nielsen took that and improved it so their depth stop is this collar. So this collar you would loosen to where you want it. What a lot of people do is they'll put a piece in here to determine the thickness. So say I want to cut a quarter inch. I would take a quarter inch piece, put it in here, and tighten the knob down. So then as you keep cutting, keep cutting, and you're adjusting the depth, adjusting the depth, it'll stop. So then boom, you, you've hit your depth stop. With the Veritas, to be honest, I really struggle with this depth stop. Um, now it's too. So you would move this up to where you want it. You'd put your piece in here. However thick you want it to be, it sits in there. You leave it. You tighten this one up to it. So 
see how it keeps spinning. That's one of the issues that I run into is it, it doesn't stay. So you have to tighten these two down. Try to make sure that it's the right depth. Maybe you can pinch the piece in between there as you're adjusting these something. Um, but then anyways, as you go to use it, you're cutting, you're cutting, you're cutting, you're cutting, you're tightening this down, and then boom, it hits your depth stop. The issue I run into is sometimes it, there it goes. The depth stop is moving. Can you see that? <laughs> so that's my biggest issue with the Veritas. Um, I have had this plane for <laughs> quite a few years now, and I honestly just don't use the depth stop. I find ways around it. I avoid using it because that exact issue is what happens. Normally, I just have it way down here and just don't use it. <laughs> so that's an issue with that. Now, dimensions wise, the Stanley styles are seven and five eighths long by three and a half inches wide. The Veritas styles, they are five and five eighths inches long by three and a half wide. So the Stanley styles are about two inches longer. Now that doesn't include the knobs. So I know the Veritas knobs go out farther, but I don't care about that because I care about the reference surface, which is bottom of the plane. So bottom of the plane is five and five eighths. The next feature I want to point out when you look at the Veritas style. So they have these two screws here, or excuse me, they have these two holes for screws here. And what you can do is you can put a base plate on here to have a bigger reference surface. So say you need to go really far out onto a tenon, but the body isn't long enough, you can screw a board on here to give you that reference area that you can then pivot from. Um, I've also done it when I had like a really wide gap that I was trying to smooth and this base wasn't big enough, just put a bigger board and then boom, you have a bigger reference surface. I guess you can do the same thing with the Stanley styles. Now, not actual Stanleys because they don't have any holes. But when you get into Bench Dog and Lee Nielsen, they have these where the fence goes. So you could put screws in here with a washer. I wouldn't recommend just a screw onto this. But with a washer, you could put a screw on here and make a bigger base for it as well. Now, when you look at open throat and closed throat, that's the next thing that I want to explain because there's arguments around it. And I'm sure I'm going to hear about them. But I haven't really found it to, to make a difference. Um, if you're cutting a really narrow piece, then you wouldn't want an open throat. Let me explain what that is. So this one right here, this is a closed throat. Right here is what we call the throat. And because it is flat with the body, it's closed. Open throat is when it is not flat with the body and see how it's raised up? So that's an open throat plane. If you're trying to do a really thin piece, then obviously you're gonna have an issue because it doesn't have contact surface here. But other than that, I really haven't found it to make a difference. Lee Nielsen sells it as open throat or closed throat. Uh, Veritas doesn't they might i've only ever seen them in closed throat though uh cats moses is just closed throat stanley maybe you can find them in in closed throat um most of the ones i've seen have been open throat but i guess what i'm trying to say is i haven't noticed a difference i haven't really found that it makes a difference in using the tool again unless you're doing really thin pieces that are just going to fit inside here you don't have a reference surface the other feature to talk about with these planes is that you can take the irons and flip them around. So yes, this is co closed throat, but what I can do is take this iron, move it to the other side and have the blade go this way. So then boom, it's, it's like an open throw, but you can also use that to get into corners. Um, it's kind of like a bull nose feature. You can do that on all of these. The Cat's Moses one, you can't. I guess you could take, so they, they connect theirs through this piece. I'll get into that later, but. I guess you could technically take it and flip it around, but the blade would have to rest below this, so you can't take thin passes with it. All right, so let's look at each one of them individually. So the first ones I'm gonna look at here are the Stanleys. This one, because it's so old and it doesn't have the depth adjust, now what I mean by that is this. It doesn't have this piece. I guess you can use it as a user, but the depth adjust on a router makes a huge difference. So, it's up to you. These are more collectors now just because they're really old. But for me to adjust the depth, I would have to loosen that and then kind of guesstimate where I want it to go. Tighten it down, make my cuts, loosen it, drop it a little bit, make my cuts, and so on and so forth. Um, you got to be careful because you can take really heavy passes, which make it really tough. You can get tear out, have a lot of issues. So again, I don't recommend this as a user. But if you can find an old Stanley with the depth adjust on it, it's gonna make just a fine user. Um, especially if you don't use a router plane a lot, then if you can get an older Stanley for a good price, then go ahead and go for it. 
On average, what I've seen is they can be anywhere from 60 to 150 to 200. Now, when you start getting into the 200 range, that's when they have all of their irons. They have their fence. They look real pretty like this one, not dirty like that one. 60, you're probably going to have some chip knobs, maybe not all the irons. They're tough, but if you can snag one for cheap and you're not going to use it a lot, it's just kind of every now and then you need a router, go ahead and go with the Stanley. Keep an eye out too if you want one that has a fence. These ones are so old they don't even have the fence. I believe that's the next patent after this one. If you decide to go with the Stanley plane or maybe you have the Stanley plane and you want to upgrade it because you want to get different sized cutters for it, you don't need to. So my buddy Michael over at Just Plain Fun, he does a video that shows you how you can take the Veritas irons and make them fit on the Stanleys. So I'll put a link to that video down below. Also, if you have the Stanley router plane, actually any Stanley plane, and you're missing a certain part or something like that for it, he has Just Plain Fun the Parts Division on Facebook where he sells different Stanley parts. So I'll put a link to that page down below as well. So the next one I want to talk about here is the Bench Dog. If you don't use a router plane very often and you kind of just want to have one on hand for when you need it, the Bench Dog is a great option for that because if you don't find an older Stanley for cheap, this is one of the cheaper ones to get. So it runs you $140. It comes with the fence and one iron. Now that iron is 3 8 They only sell a 3 8 iron. I didn't see anywhere that they sell different sizes. But I measured them and it looks like you can get the Lee Nielsen blades to fit in here. Lee Nielsen irons are just really expensive. Now features of these planes, you're going to see it's the same thing as the Lee Nielsen. So I'm just going to go over them briefly because we'll dive into them a little bit more at the Lee Nielsen. Depth stop right here. Depth adjust here. Blade lock right there. This one is the open throat style. On their website, they list it like they have a closed throat version, but I couldn't find it. So I don't know if they discontinued that or not, but this is open throat. However, you can flip the blade around into that like bull nose position to get into corners. So here's the bench dog. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The next one I want to look at here is the Lee Nielsen. Now, let me go over the price of the Lee Nielsen because that might make your decision right away. So for the closed throat, you're looking at $250. For the open throat, you're looking at $225. Now it does come with the fence and one iron. For you to buy multiple irons for the Lee Nielsen, you need a $40 adapter. And then the smaller blades are 50 bucks. The bigger blades are 75 bucks a piece. So that might make your decision. As I mentioned before, I don't like the fence style of this one. Um, I prefer the Veritas style, but that's your call. If you're a diehard Lee Nielsen, obviously your, your decision's made. My biggest gripe with the Lee Nielsen, other than the fence and the knobs, I don't like that the knobs are straight up and down, is how you have to change these irons out. So say, for example, I want to swap out this iron. Okay, I loosen my depth adjust. I make sure that the, this is loose. What I have to do is take this knob all the way off. Take that all the way off, then you pop the iron out, grab whatever other iron you want, and then you put it back in here. Put the collar back on, then you have to get this knob back on. There, and then you got your iron, and you can, you can tighten the blade, that screw shouldn't have fallen out. But then you can tighten the blade back down. Now, the bench dog is the same way, but I find this blade easier to change out. It's quicker because they didn't machine it as tight in there, which actually kind of gives this a boost up over the Lee Nielsen to me. So that's pretty much it for the Stanley style planes, um, Stanley and Lee Nielsen style planes. They don't have a lot of bells and whistles. They are just your, your in my opinion, basic router planes. If you're not going to use them often, you don't need a ton of attachments, then, then you're good to, to find an older Stanley. If you're a diehard Lee Nielsen, go with Lee Nielsen. If you're not a diehard Lee Nielsen, I can't say that I recommend it. I'll talk about that a little bit more at the outro. The next one here is the Katz Moses, which is a Veritas style. Um, it's basically the same as the Veritas, except for this whole piece in here, which in my opinion is a big change. So this is the depth adjust, which is really smooth and stays square. You can have this snugged up and still adjust, which I like. Now you can lock it down all the way if you want to so that this can't be moved. But I don't really see a need for that. I see that you can adjust the depth, have it snug, and not have this move around because it's held in there by a screw. So it's, it's really solid. 
you can see the line in here so it's it's grooved in there really well i'm not even gonna lie like this is super solid i like it i like the depth adjust um i wish there was a depth stop kind of like the lee nielsen what they have is this right here so my buddy is in metric so that's what these are in but you can get them in inches too so what you do is you just have to pay attention to it so as you're adjusting you'd say okay i need one millimeter and boom i'm there and then you stop. So you have to make sure that this is on point. You can loosen this and adjust it to where you need it. But I wish they did a little bit more with this. Um, the irons. So this plane is going to cost you 190 bucks. It comes with the fence and two irons. So they're irons. You unscrew this. You take this piece off. You sharpen it. And then you screw it back on. Screwing this on and off is a pain to me. Because that, that screw there is pretty long. So it's just, just a hassle, but it's easier to sharpen a little piece versus a full iron. So that's where it's, you gotta weigh the options. But it comes with a half inch flat head and then a half inch spear point. Now as you see those lines right there, on the underside of this post, there are lines and that's what helps you keep the iron square. Cause that was one of my biggest questions is, well, how do I make sure this stays square? Do I have to bust out a square? No. There's lines machined in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it this way. See those lines? Those lines right there embed into lines in the bottom of the post, and that's what keeps it good. The only other thing they changed was on the Veritas, this is a flathead screw. They changed it into a brass knob, which it is a little bit easier there. The last one we're going to look at here is the Veritas style. Um, they created the Veritas style, and they are Veritas. <laughs> so... They have the same features as the Cat's Moses one that you just saw. This is the fence right here. And then the only thing that's different is this depth adjust. So they use this. So you loosen it here, adjust your depth, lock it down. The depth stop, as I mentioned before, I really struggle with. So I just don't use it. Um, again, if you guys have figured out a way to use this correctly, please let me know because I'm guessing it's user error and I'm doing something wrong. But... Yeah, I don't know what else to try it. I'm, I'm just over it. So I literally just leave it down here at the bottom. Um, what I really like about this plane is how easy it is to change the iron. So I mentioned with the Lee Nielsen, it's tough. With this one, it's super easy. So let me show you that in real time. Done. I'm ready to go. That makes a huge difference to me because I use this plane for everything and I need it to be really versatile and have a lot of different irons and different cutters and all this kind of stuff. And Veritas does that. Um, it's a lot easier to change it than I'd say any other planes, maybe the Stanley because it just drops out. But I really like this depth adjust here. The only other thing I heard about the Veritas that people don't like is they say that this screw comes loose like as you're using it, as you're using it, as you're using it, this gets loose. I haven't found that to be the case, but I have heard that it's a thing. Now with the Veritas, you can get some additional features. So they have an inlay cutter head that you can get that I, I really like. I mean, this sets it apart for me significantly because I love doing inlays. So what this is, you have these different spacers that determines how wide your inlay is gonna be. You put this where the blade goes and then boom, well, it goes this way, you, you cut your inlays. Then you flip it around, take the iron out and you can, you can cut with a regular iron. So this is awesome. Um, it comes with a ton of different blades. So for the price for the Veritas, you get one fence, two cutters, which is, I believe, the spear point and the flat, which are these ones right here. They do the same thing. So you can undo this screw to sharpen it. just makes it easier, but you can pop the whole blade out and sharpen if you want to. So for the two irons, the fence, and the plane, you're looking at $199. If you want to buy additional irons, you can get a set of five for 86, which is a huge difference compared to the Lee Nielsen. Because remember, the Lee Nielsen, you have to buy that $40 adapter, and then each iron is $50 to $75. So for Veritas, five irons, 86 bucks. They do sell a big three quarters iron, which a lot of people use for hinges. That one's $19.50 by itself. The other thing that I like about Veritas, I want to show you guys just because it's neat. You can buy all of this stuff separately, or you can buy it in a box. Let me zoom this out. So you can buy, not this, 
You can buy everything together in a box, which would be the plane, the irons, the fence, and then this is a sharpening jig for it. That's an option as well. If this is a plane that you're going to be using a lot and you want all the different colors, I recommend buying them all at once. I didn't have the money right away, so I, I bought things as I went, but it, it cost you a little bit more money. They do have the medium one. That was the one that was in here. Lee Nielsen also makes a medium. Stanley makes a small. Cats Moses and Bench Dog, they don't make mediums at all. But I love this storage box. I use it a lot. It does have a lid, but I took that out. I want to start by saying that these are all solid options, no matter which one you go other than the Stanley without the depth adjust. So if you're going to go with the Stanley, make sure it has the depth adjust because it would just be a pain without it, to be real with you. It would just be really annoying. So any of these options are going to work for you. They are all great options. It's going to come down to how much you want to pay, how you want it to look, and how versatile you want it to be. If you wanted to get into the nitty gritty of all the different specs that I reviewed, I'll list those down below. For the Stanley versus Veritas style, Stanley Fench connects underneath, and then you have to take the screw out and move it in different positions. Uh, with the Bench Dog and the Lee Nielsen, I actually think the older Stanleys only have one hole. Um, the other thing is the knobs for the Stanley style, they're straight up and down. And then Veritas style, I like their fence a lot better. It's just easier to use. It has more range, and you don't have to take a screw out every time. You just loosen it and move it. I also like the handles that they're angled. It's more ergonomic for me. It's easier to use. Um, if you are not going to use this plane very often, you just want one to have on hand the Bench Dog or an older Stanley, they're great options. The next step up from that, I would say, is the Cat's Moses. On that note, if you're going to be taking very heavy passes with a router plane, I don't recommend it, but if you do and that's your style, that's fine. The Cat's Moses is the way to go because it is the most solid when you're taking heavy passes because of the way that they have everything machined in here. I do really like the depth adjust, but I really don't like how you have to change this cutter out, how you have to unscrew this screw to take this piece to sharpen it, to screw it back in. I really wish they would have come up with a different way of how to do that, but looking at it, I really don't know that there was any other way. Now, if you want the next step up from the Cat's Moses, it's definitely gonna be the Veritas or the Lee Nielsen. Honestly, I can't say I recommend the Lee Nielsen at all, and you guys are probably gonna hate me for that, but let me say, all of my bench planes are Lee Nielsen. I picked them because I like that brand better, okay? But when it comes to their joinery planes or their specialty planes, they're really starting to let me down, and Veritas is basically just running them over with all the different features and specs that they have. For this instance, they all have the same things. I mean, they both have depth stops. I don't like the Veritas one, I can't get it to work. Let me know down below. Um, I like the Veritas fence, but they both have fences. Lee Nielsen, it's the price. It's, it's the price that's really killing me here. So for closed throat, it's $250. Open throat, $225. If you want different cutters, you got to buy a $40 adapter and then $50 to $75 per iron. I mean, <laughs> that just blows my mind. So if you want a plane with a ton of different irons, I can't recommend the Lee Nielsen. I would definitely recommend going with the Veritas. They have the most attachments, they have the most features, and the price isn't that bad because you can get five irons for 86 bucks. You can also get an inlay cutter for it. I really wish that the depth stop worked better or maybe I'm just not using it right. And then again, some people are saying that this gets really loose. Um, after recording that, I realized that is kind of true if you're trying to make very heavy passes. If you're making light passes, you're fine. As the iron starts getting lower and lower, if you start taking deep passes, you're gonna run into issues. But if you're still keeping light cuts, you're gonna be fine. Again, you'll be okay with any of the ones you pick other than the Stanley that doesn't have a depth stop. <laughs> um, if you guys have these planes, maybe I missed a feature or maybe there was something that you guys don't like that I liked or whatever, let us know down below. Um, if people watching this are anything like me and they're trying to make a decision, they're watching videos and they're reading articles and they're, they're doing all this stuff to try to make the right decision, help them out down below. Let them know which one you have, which one you like. If you watch this video and make, made a decision, let us know down below why you did that as well. Um, the last thing that I want to mention is Cat's Moses, if they start coming out with other irons, I would probably bump it up in the queue and say that it's a little bit better um, because it is solid in here. And because this is really smooth, but even if they come out with other cutters, I'm not going to switch everything over because I already have the full set up for the Veritas and just this change in here is not going to convince me to, to switch over, I guess. 
But if you're trying to make those decisions, hopefully this helped you guys out. Read the comments below. Hopefully people are commenting there to help give you their opinions as well because, again, everybody's allowed to have their own. And... Huge shout out to the people that let me borrow the planes. Uh, Blaine, Ben, Joe, thank you. I love you. And to all my subscribers, I love you. If you have not subscribed, please do that. That's going to help me out with the channel because, again, as I mentioned, I'm going full force with this channel just to see where it takes us. And from looking at my stats, I can tell that there's like 60% of you or 70% of you that have not subscribed. So help me out. Hit that subscribe button and have a good day.